Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to talk about linear and radial gradient masks in develop mode in ACDC Ultimate 2024. As I look at this photo, I can see that I have this foreground where I have some animals and then I have the background of the photo. And I think that I can totally enhance this photo by choosing an area where I want to set my focus on. And I'm going to do that through exposure and through radial gradients. So after I open my image in develop mode, I'm going to select the radial gradient mask, and I'm going to drag it right here and adjust the gradient to cover the area that has the light hitting it and where I can see more of the action, more of the subjects of my photo. It's important to see that ACDC will mark in red the areas that will be affected by any of your edits, and the area that remains without the red will stay the same. And so, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the exposure in everything but this area that I have uh, selected with my radial gradient. So, let's take a look at the radial gradient controls. Every time you add a radial gradient, you will notice the feathering slider, which if, if I bring it fully to the left, you'll see that the edges of my selection are pretty strong. Or if I drag it mostly to the right, you can see that it's a lot more blurry. So we want to find somewhere in the middle to make the area that we're going to enhance a lot more natural. So a good amount of feathering will work. And if you head down, you'll see squareness. And squareness, all it's going to do, if I drag my feathering back to almost zero, and then I increase squareness, you'll see that the radial gradient becomes square. So let's go back and add more feathering to my image. And now let's hide my mask and reduce the exposure up here. Immediately, we start seeing this difference in focus that we want to apply in our image. I reduce the exposure quite a bit. And if I look at my original photo, obviously my eyes are guided towards the area with more light. So after creating that, I can go ahead and maybe move my grain in a bit more. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to increase the contrast of the overall image right here in the general tab below. So if I increase contrast, maybe I increase exposure again and a little bit of vibrance. That's a bit too much, but right there. Now we can see how using a radial gradient, we've added that dynamic that we want. Let's take a look at, a, at another example. And again, we're going to select the radial gradient. We're going to move the radial gradient and select the face of our kitty cat. So if I hide my mask, and again, I bring down the exposure, you'll notice how all of the exposure is being brought down, but right here in the center, it stays exactly the same. And just by making that small adjustment, my image becomes more interesting the light exposure um, guides the eye towards where it wants to focus. I can take this even a step further by adding more radial gradients. So let's try to bring the brightness in the eye a bit more. So I'm going to select the cat's eyes. Around there, I'm going to show my mask and what I'm going to do now, because remember that everything that's in red will be affected by your edits, all I'm going to do is invert the current selected mask. So this way, and after hiding my mask, I can adjust the exposure of only that area that is selected. And I'm going to add more brightness by increasing the exposure, a touch more, more vibrance, and a little bit more clarity, which adds a little bit of texture. To my image. So you can see um, how the eye is uh, affected in this way. 
And now I'm just going to add a new radial gradient and apply it to my other eye. Now my mask is inverted and I have my eye selected. And again, I'm going to increase the exposure, vibrance and clarity just a touch. Now, if I go back to the full size of my image, I can take a look at how it looked before and how it looks after. So we're going to start with a linear gradient. And immediately, this gives me the idea of darkening my sky a little bit up here. So I'm just going to decrease the exposure like that which is, again, helping the viewer bring their attention to the mountain. So that's before, and that's after I applied my gradient. Just gonna drag it a bit more to the top, like that. And what I could do, obviously, is apply another linear gradient, but shift it so that the bottom is affected. And that is a really good way to go about it. However, down here, there's a lot of detail of the snow on the trees that I don't want to lose. So in this case, we're not going to use a linear gradient on the bottom. We're going to add a radial gradient. I'll bring this down like this. And I'm going to invert my mask so that I only affect the area in red. I'm going to expand this a little bit more. And I'm going to increase feathering. And as you can see, the area on the bottom is not being selected. So when I reduce the exposure, I'll start creating that contrast while preserving the details of the snow in the bottom, which I think turns out to become a much, much better image. So that's before and after. And we can enhance whatever is happening in the middle of our photo by adding another radial gradient. So now we can move our gradient, invert it, and make sure we are selecting the mountains. So that's pretty good. And let's see if we, I'll probably do, just bring this down a little bit more. And now we'll hide our masks and we can start increasing a bit of, of the vibrance and saturation, maybe even a little bit more contrast. Exposure is good. I'm going to go back to zero. Yes, so a little bit more saturation and contrast. That's a bit too much. Maybe some clarity. And so there you have it. Our photo that looked a little bit flat now has a lot more contrast, a lot more dynamics. We've darkened the top, we've darkened the bottom, with, but also left the details of the snow, and we've enhanced the middle of, of our image where the mountains are. Finally, you can, we can change a little bit the overall adjustments here in the general tab below. I'll just add a little bit more contrast and I'll, I'll actually reduce the contrast that I had on my selection, but increase the contrast on my overall image. I can go, the cool thing is I can go back to my masks, of course, and keep editing them. So I can darken my sky above even more. And now my image acquired a much stronger feeling to it, right? So we have a nice feeling of maybe a morning or late evening. That's about it. That's how you can use linear gradient and radial gradient masks to enhance your images. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.